Hello folks, my name's Tom Massey, and I've got a doozy of a show lined up for you. I've got George Buzzard Massey, the founder of the Gold Prospectors Association. This guy's probably forgot more about prospecting for gold than most of us will ever know, and he's going to be up on that famous Gnome Gold Beach, showing you how to get that fine flower gold, real educational. He's got Bob Clem along with him, and yours truly, and you'll notice the camera gets pretty stationary when I'm in front of it because I filmed all these shows up there with him and this is a real educational one. I hope you enjoy George Buzzard Massey. Well we're out here uh, on the beach and I'm going to talk to you about fine gold recovery. You know all over the all over the world really uh, the United States uh, back in North Carolina and down in Florida on some of the beaches and and uh, in South Texas, uh, even in San Francisco, there was millions of dollars worth of gold taken right off the beaches in San Francisco and Southern California. Of course, you got Gold Beach, Oregon, which is really famous, and up around Crescent City all along the Pacific Coast. And uh, you get up into Alaska, well, you've got Cape Yak Attack, and of course, the world-famous beach at Nome, Alaska, which is the uh, probably the granddaddy of all of them. But you got a lot of beach placers, and there's a lot of fellas that go out and work them. And they uh, learned some really interesting things working beach placers. I've seen guys like uh, Bug Eye Brooks, that's his nickname, his real name is uh, Rich Brooks. And old Bug Eye, he came up to the beach uh, and he bastard uh, working the beach and saving that fine gold. And then he went back into the Yuba River uh, there in California and one of the rivers where he dredged all the time. And he cleaned up his concentrates uh, using beach methods. And boy, the guys were really surprised at how much gold he was getting. And so, uh, if you, uh, if you adapt these uh, processes, no matter where you go, the process is saving that fine gold. You can, get, uh, you can get a lot more gold on your weekends and when you go out. And there's a lot of fine gold in Utah and out in the deserts of Arizona. And it's just a matter of learning how to work that. And one of the best places to learn how to master the technology, and it's a simple technology of, of, of trapping that beach gold. So I want to go over with you a, a tried and true uh, a beach operation. Now, let me tell you, they're not real pretty. They're not yuppie. They're not upscale. They don't cost you a million dollars. You can go and get you some scrap lumber down at the home club or one of the hardware stores close to you, and you can build one of these things. And uh, I'll show you what kind of uh, uh, stuff is built because there's really nothing that's manufactured that'll trap gold like just a regular old beach box will. And Blueberry John, uh, he's one of the guys that's uh, about 80 years old, 75 years old. Blueberry developed over the years of 60 years of work in the beach uh, how to trap that fine gold. So have a lot of other fellas. And then after I show you this and how it works, well, we're going to have uh, we're going to have Tom uh, come on and Bob Clem, and uh, we're going to we're going to show you some places, hopefully that are around close to you, that you can get some gold. But let's just take a look at one of these typical beach boxes. Like I say, it's not pretty to look at, but sometimes. The things that are that are not too pretty work the best, you know, and and uh, that goes for men too, you know. Pretty, pretty men don't seem to work too well. Pretty women work awful well, but pretty men don't. Anyway, let's take a look at a, a regular beach box. What you got to have is a nice wide box, a lot wider than what your normal box would be, because what you got to do is you got to spread that material out, because on the beach you got a lot of fine heavy sand and that fine heavy sand needs to be spread out with just a little bit of water moving over it so that that fine gold can drop out and the other material can move away from it because what you're dealing with is you're dealing with a particle of gold that's much smaller than the surrounding particles of black sand it's in many cases now you will find the occasional nice big piece now even though that particle of gold is 19 times heavier than water or probably two or three times heavier than the other heavy material that it's locked in with, it still has to displace that larger piece of material and drop out in that box. In all of the mining equipment that we have, we trade off. You know, nothing is perfect, and so we trade off. You know, a guy builds a perfect gold dredge for the spot that he's working, but it doesn't work too well in another spot because the goal can be different. So let's take a look at some of the things that make a, make a beach box work. Like I said, you spread it out, you spread your water out, you get your flow down to where it's manageable, and no more water, no more water than's necessary. Remember that, that's important. And then what I've got here is I've got a rubber matting 
that goes down here, and this is just a rib matting like you would find uh, as a, a walkway, you know. A, 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 the, I don't know any other way to describe it than the black rib rubber matting that they uh, that they walk on. Guys use all different kinds of stuff for this, but this real it's just got a little lip on it here, and it's ribbed. And what happens is that the gold will drop into those ribs, and then the other stuff will wash down. Now, a lot of the gold will come down, too, but it'll leave a lot of gold up there. It's visible, and the more gold you see, when you see a lot of gold, then you take that and you dump that off into a bucket. And if you can come in here and take a look, you can see that we've got gold all in this area here from shoveling into it. we got gold all over there. So I've, I've got a pregnant mat, and I'm ready to pull my riffles up and take that and wash it out into a bucket and put it back in here. Now that gold will move all the way down this rib, ribbed matting, and you can see the black sand here, and it goes into what we call a Nomad, and that's a 3M product. And what that is is that's just that woven Nomad uh, carpet that they have, and we call it Miner's Moss, a lot of us, and the gold will get entrapped into that along with the black sand and the ruby sand. And then when we come out of that, what we've got here on the end of it is I've got two Henry Henry's hooked up, one running each way to split that material so that I can handle the flow of water because, again, I've got too much water for one Henry Henry, so I've got two of them. And with a little ingenuity, what you can do is you can split that and make three if you've got uh, too much water yet. But remember, you want to spread that out and make it nice and wide. Now, some of the fellas will take and they make their box and they'll use, instead of using two by fours, they'll use plastic pipe and all sorts of things. And at the GPAA, I think we've got some plans on how to make a beach box. And like I said, you can adopt it not only if you're working the beach, you can adapt it anywhere that you have this flower gold. And I'll tell you something, if you trap the flower gold, buddy, you can get gold every weekend that you go out. So what you do here is when you start to see gold in there, of course, you want to clean up. I hardly see them in my Henry Henry, but I use that Henry Henry to clean up some of the concentrates from the boil box and the way the beach box works. And then, of course, you want to work your uh, you want to make sure that you've got a good foot valve and, and uh, a good pump, a good trash pump to work out in the beach if that's where you're working or work in the creek if that's what you're doing there. And uh, you can just take this simple plastic hose and drill holes in it with a drill motor to make your spray bar. You want about quarter inch holes so that they don't get plugged up with, uh, with material because remember you're sucking out of the ocean so you'll have some seaweed and stuff so you want those holes. Uh, at least a quarter inch and you want that spraying up on your board and when you take a shovel full of material when you take a shovel full of material and I got some dumped over here and you put that on there you want to make sure that you throw it up here on that board and allow that to wash down in there real easy and then I've got a quarter inch screen here that classifies the material as it washes over now I'm just going to dump this in here and we'll take a look at what happens down there on my on my mat now you see the material as it's coming on the mat and see it's covered up my gold and it's just kind of working along there and it'll take a while for that black sand to move over there. You don't feed your box too fast. That's what a lot of people that go out and work the beach their first time, they have a tendency to just want to shovel in their box all the time. Well, gold mining is kind of like the army. It's hurry up and wait. You hurry up and get out there and then you take your time. You kind of wait, throw a shovel full up there, let it work its way down, let that fine gold settle along in that rib matting, let that wash out of there, and you just take your time. We're going to take a short break uh, for commercial, and then we're going to come back, and I'm going to bring Tom on. Tom's got a lot of places where that this fine gold is occurrence. As a matter of fact, most places where you find flat placer gold, you'll find an abundance of flower gold. Seldom, though, will it be as fine as it is on the beach. And because it's so fine on the beach, it's, it's what they call gold dust. You can put some of it in your hand and like that, and you can blow it, and uh, it, it's just like face powder. What I recommend to you, that any time that you go out prospecting, whether you're on the, looking for beach plossers or whether you're working desert plossers or wherever, but what I recommend to you is that you shovel into your box you collect your concentrates and you dump those concentrates off into your buckets. You see my buckets back over here and you dump that into your buckets and you take it home with you because you can't take the beach home with you. 
and a lot of times the surf is up and you can't keep your foot valve out and things like that. But what you can take home with you is an abundance of this black sand and this concentrate. And then when you're at home, uh, when, when you're in your garage or whatever and you've got your operation set up or if you want to do it like I do and sit right there in front of the TV set in your easy chair with your tub and your gold pan and you can pan out those concentrates and use your sucker bottle to pull it out. We're going to take this back to the old buzzard roost mine and I'm going to show you how these concentrates work. But first we're going to take a break and then I'm going to bring Tom and maybe Bob over and we're going to talk about some of the places where that you can go prospecting because chances are there's some of this fine gold right around close to where you live and they'll show you where it's at and, and I'm going to tell you about the buzzard special because I got a real good deal for you on that and I want to tell you about that and how that uh, you can have a whole lot of different places where you can go prospecting so we'll be right back. I got Tom Massey. How you doing Tom? Good. And, uh, and Tom brought the book along, and we're going to talk right. a little bit about beach blasters. Tom, uh, Bob, I know you've had some experience on the beach. Uh, what can a guy expect to get in the day out there on the beach? Well, up here in the Nome Beach, George, uh, it's not uncommon to get an ounce or an ounce and a half, even two ounces after a good storm. Yeah. Yeah. I, well, what beach. about like down Crescent City, uh, California, or Gold Beach, Oregon, or down there on the Texas coast? Those beaches carry gold also, and I understand that uh, you can get a half ounce or an ounce down there even. You just got to do your prospecting the down there and get into a good spot. Up here, it's a lot easier because you've got a lot of good spots, but there you got some real good spots, but you just got to prospect them out and find them. Yeah, well, uh, now that's uh, gold at $350 an ounce. That's three, dollars $400 a day, fellas. You're talking lots of money here. Yeah. It's I'll all flower and gold. There's no, there's no big nuggets or anything. No. It's just flower gold. Fine gold. It's fine gold, come, but a lot of it. Tell me something, Tom. If, if there's that kind of gold, and you're finding that kind of gold, and I know you have. I know you work North Carolina, and I know you work California beaches and up in Oregon. If you can find that kind of gold on the beach, how come more people aren't out doing it? Well, a lot of people don't know. They don't know they about don't it. Believe. They believe they hear that all <laughs> the gold's been found. There ain't no more gold out there, but that ain't true. Only 5% yeah. of it's ever been taken out. Yeah. They think a beach to get a suntan on. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I understand the suntan. The sun rays will, will work your skin over and cause skin cancer, you know, but... Uh, this is Mother Nature's welfare system. God go out there if he don't have a job and he can get gold on the beach. Then. Yeah. But it's flower gold. Where does a guy sell his gold, Tom? Well, a lot of guys sell their gold at the gold shows, the GPA gold shows, and they're advertised every now and then, and that's a good place to sell your gold. And then also you can sell it to some of the smelters and jewelry dealers. and. Uh, if you have four or five ounces, you can sell it to Engelhart. Yeah. Uh, well, you go through a smelter and they refine it and they sell it to Englehart. The best way to sell it, of course, is at the, uh, at the gold shows and swap meads and places like that. They make jewelry. They make these little basils or beasles. And, for and, the right uh, price, I'll buy it. Yeah, for the right <laughs> price, anybody buy it. Yeah, you know, ladies and gentlemen, when I work a beach plaster, and this is real good information no matter where you're uh, out prospecting, is that I take and I develop the concentrates and then I bring the concentrates back to my my home where I'm set up in my garage to do to work out my my stuff and by that I mean that I don't clean the gold down to it's it's where it's completely clean and ready for sale I bring it back it's still got some black sand in it because I don't take that time away from my field mining and I also do that when I'm working on the river I'll just take the concentrates from my dredge and maybe I'll rough pan them to see if there's any nuggets in there and then I'll dump all that stuff into a bucket and I always carry it back to my hooch, uh, what I call my hooch, and then we we uh, pan out the uh, concentrates and clean it up with our sucker bottle and stuff like that to, to find the goal. And that's what I do there. And I'll show you, I have in this pan here uh, some material. Now, I know fellows that work the uh, beaches even in Southern California, and of course they have to do a little bit more shoveling down there because the, the sand's not as rich. Uh, as, as some of the beaches are, the ones up around, all, well, all along the Pacific coast, and of course, uh, back in uh, in uh, on the East Coast around Virginia and in that area, there's some uh, been some reports. I've never worked the beaches back there, but I've had a lot of guys write me letters and tell me that they have, and that it's pretty much the same, uh, basically fine gold. Uh, that they find there, and, and I uh, haven't heard of too many nuggets. Uh, on the beach at Nome, I guess there are a few nuggets that was found, uh, but it's it's pretty rare. Now, what I've done in this particular pan is I've taken some of my beach concentrates, and 
I've thrown them in my pan here, and, and, and once you get them down, you can get them down fairly good by running them through a Henry Henry. That's a piece of sewer pipe that you've cut in half, and you got a garden hose in it, you spoon your concentrates in there, and you, and you concentrate it down a little bit more, and every one of these steps that you go through just concentrates it down some more. So now you'll wind up with some fairly rich concentrates like I've got here in the pan, but still got black sand in. I will generally take a magnet sometimes and remove the magnetic from that, but sometimes when you're dealing with this fine gold, a magnet will entrap several of those tiny particles of gold. Some of them are, are so fine that they, they're just like face powder, but, but the first step that I do in cleaning that is I'll take and I'll pan that, and I'll take that concentrate in the pan, and I'll spread that out like that. Now, you know, to go in there and try to pick every one of those pieces out is quite a chore, but there's a way to do that. Now, Blueberry, he's got his bounce, and, and in the GPAA tape, Blueberry John shows his bounce. I've got a different method that's simple. A lot of different things work, and, and, and I use it as a tapping method. And if you'll just see here, I can take and tap on that, and the gold will gather up right alongside the edge of the pan, like so. And that's almost clean with the black sand removed. Let's just try that again. Let me dip that down here in the water, and I've just got a pinch of my concentrates. You know, you can pan and sample. Now, one of the best beaches to work is that 40 miles of beach at Nome, Alaska to work for beach placers. But even on that beach, as rich as that is, and you can take almost any pan of material up there and find some gold in it. But even as rich as that is, you need to take your gold pan and prospect. Now, let's just tap that, let that walk over there. Now, here, let me show you once more. Let's take this thing. Let's swirl that around there and spread it out. See, we kind of just kind of shake it like that and spread it out. And then we take and we tap, and tap like this on the pan. And see all that gold settle up over there? Now let me show you the next step, how we get it out. We take our sucker bottle and we put a squeeze on the sucker bottle and then we go right in that edge of that pan and just kind of vacuum that gold right up. Now, that gold we got in our sucker bottle. See it here? See it right there in the sucker bottle? We got that, and that's nice, clean gold. We can dump that in. Still just a tiny bit of black sand, but certainly saleable when you got it down to where that it's 90% gold. You can ship it to a, a smelter, uh, a, you know, a refiner. There's a lot of them around. If you don't have the name of them, uh, you can write into the GPAA, and we'll give you. Now you just spread that around again, and you do that process again. See, we got it there. Now you just tap on that pan. See that gold just walk right up there. See, and gather in that ridge. And when you get it to that certain point, then you stop, you take your sucker bottle, take your sucker bottle, put a squeeze on it, and then just vacuum it up. And, and it's a slow process, but it's a labor of love. Uh, mining has to be a labor of love by nature. When you, now you see, we, we got, oh, we probably got a penny weight of gold in there. What's that worth, a penny weight? Well, a lot of people take that and put it in a locket a bezel or a basil, depending on whether you're from Texas or not, and I'm not making fun of Texans, I love Texas. Texas, that's where men are men and women are proud of it. So is Alaska. Anyway, you, some people take that and they put it in a, a little bezel or basil and they put it on a chain around your neck and they sell that for jewelry. Now what are they getting for that? Well, uh, some of them sell that, some of the prospectors sell that for as high as, uh, oh, two dollars a grain. And in a penny weight, there's 20 grains. In a penny weight, that'd be $40. Uh, that uh, that works up to uh, that works up to about $800, $900 an ounce. You don't have to dig as much if you can get a $1,000 an ounce for it. Your nuggets, the coarser stuff, like I got here in this bottle. Now this didn't come off of a beach, but this is coarser gold. We're just talking about uh, uh, what gold sells for. A little nugget like this one here. This is a fairly large size nugget. A little nugget like that probably worth about 25 to 50. Bucks. That means you're getting, uh, if you add that up, that means you're getting about $1,000 an ounce for your gold. I saw some gold from the Valdez Creek, one of the largest mines in the state of Alaska, and the guy had some nice nuggets. He had them down at Fred Myers. He was selling Fred Myers in Anchorage uh, the last time I was in Anchorage, and he had all this pile of nuggets there, and he had $59 a penny weight. That works out to about $1,200 an ounce for that gold. That's a pretty good price. That's a far cry from the $400 or the $380, whatever the London price is. If you take this and ship it to a refiner, normally what they're going to charge is they're going to charge your refining fee. They're going to take the impurities. They're going to ship it to uh, maybe Englehart or somebody, depending on how much you got, and you're going to wind 
wind up getting a shrinkage of about 20%, and then you'll get the spot price or with a few bucks knocked off, and then your refining charge on that. So you take a penalty that way. If you can be a little bit creative about selling your gold, you can get a lot more for it.